Hi, everybody. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. And welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Well, Jim, we talked a little bit about the Boston Marathon bombings last week. I mean, when we recorded that video, everything was just new, brand spanking new. But we've learned a few more things since then. Yeah, uh, the story's pretty much over in terms of uh, the manhunt, obviously. Uh, on April uh, 18th, the FBI released pictures of two of the suspects. A massive manhunt began in the Boston area. I don't know. I didn't... I feel like I didn't get a lot of work done at yeah. work because, you know, everyone's talking about it and everyone's, oh, did you hear the latest thing? And, oh, you know, and it, it was very, uh, a very interesting story to follow. Uh, on April 19th in Watertown, a suburb of Boston, uh, Tamerlan Sarnayev nice. was shot, killed in a firefight with police. Later that night, his brother Zokar was captured. Uh, two Boston Bruins games uh, were postponed. Uh, but they did have an emotional game uh, where the fans sang the national anthem. Uh, the Red Sox game, there was another uh, another event there. It's going to come up again uh, later in the show. But it, it involved a, a, a favorite of ours, David Absolutely. Ortiz, Big Poppy. Um, and uh, at this week's London Marathon, uh, there was a, a sign that said uh, something along the lines of, uh, you can run, you can walk, but make sure you finish for Boston. So a lot of, uh, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, happiness i would say after the the second guy was captured and you know like like we're saying here uh you know guys like david ortiz speaking to the city and uh, and uh, the red sox the jersey said boston on the front and they they always say red sox so that that was a uh, you know uh, some a little something that they did that probably meant a lot to a lot of people so it's been uh it's been an interesting few days in sports but definitely a, a story that uh this boston marathon story and just it shook everyone up real good. Yeah, I mean, we don't talk a whole lot about this side of things. You know, I mean, it does have to do with sports of the Boston Marathon. But you mentioned it earlier and the role of, of social media. And we've never really had an event like this where you're exactly right. I was at work doing the same thing. I hope nobody from work is watching. But uh, I, was, uh, I was at work doing the same thing and just kind of watching it go. And, and everything was immediate. And you knew stuff was happening right away. And it was really an interesting story that way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and uh, even uh, just in the, the moments after the initial explosions, you know, you, you're seeing these pictures across social media and they're, you know, you're flagging people over to your desk yeah. saying, did you see this? And it, you know, it was, it was surreal, but it was a, it, an interesting kind of surreal because you almost, you, you're more connected to these situations from wherever you are in the world now than you know, ever before. So it's, it's crazy in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll move on to a little bit more sport related stuff here. Um, Kevin Lowe, uh, the Edmonton Oilers president of, op of hockey operations for life, uh, apologized to fans this week after gaff at last week's press conference where he kind of, kind of said, you know, that there were two tiers of fans in Edmonton. Yeah. Did he apologize? It, was that, was that actually what, what happened? Oh. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right. Jeff, but what Lowe said was, if I offended anybody, I'm sorry. Now, I I think I think his heart's in the right place and okay. he's trying to, you know, I think he's trying to apologize. Trying. Yeah, trying and to. Doing. I just write it down on a piece of paper, man. Have <laughs> someone else read it, you know? But I, I noticed right away across social media, people are saying, you know, in the well, I would like to apologize. <laughs> yes. And, well, you know, like, this guy even sucks at apologies. <laughs> he may know how to win, but he doesn't know how to apologize. He does, does have six rings, Jim. I don't he know does, if you knew that, yeah. but he's got six rings. I, I heard that he's had some success in the NHL. That's right. Uh, however, it was, yeah, you, you're watching it and you're just going. You're just shaking your head, right? Oh, like, Kevin. Are you just sure? say, hey, listen, man, I, uh I'm sorry. I, I, I messed up. Yeah. And that's what it should have been. It should have been like, I'm sorry. I was emotional. I, I, I messed up. If I offended the oh. hundreds of thousands who can't be in attendance right. on a night to night basis for a variety of reasons, going from us being sold out every night to our tickets being very expensive. If I offended any of that group <laughs> by saying that we only care about the, the butts in the seats, if you were offended by that, 
then in that case, I'm sorry that you were offended. <laughs> yes. Uh, is, is is that does yeah. that count? Is that an apology? Okay, good. Yeah, cut it. Let's do it. Cut it. Print it. Yeah, well, and that's exactly it. I was gonna say when you said his heart was probably in the right place. Are you sure that wasn't uh, th- their their press guy is JJ Hebert or something? Anyway, are you sure it wasn't JJ off and they're like Kevin? Hey. Read this. Listen, you got to do it. <laughs> the the thing about being a human being is that most of our hearts are just in the right place. Right. That's you don't even have to do anything. That's just science puts it there. That's just science. So that's just me doing a half-hearted. Just like, I, you know, just like he can do a half-hearted apology. That's me j- trying to be a half-hearted good guy. Like, yep, ah, I'm sure you didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But no, it starts in the right place, whether he's a jerk or not. Yeah. That's just science, man. That's anatomy. That's just science. I love it. Uh, yeah, well, staying with the Edmonton Oilers, they announced Sunday that young superstar Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to be injured for the rest of the year. Yeah, shoulder surgery. It's kind of a rite of passage. To, to become a great young forward on the Edmonton Oilers. Right. Uh, it, it's a lingering injury from when he was in junior. Uh, the same surgery that many of the Oilers have had, including Taylor Hall uh, last last year. There's a six-month recovery time. Luckily, uh, they checked their calendar, Jeff, yep. and they don't have a lot going on in the next oh, six months. Oh, they've got a little time in the next Just, six months. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they planned it that way so gotcha. that you wouldn't have to play through the pain. But to his credit, um, I read a quote from him uh, saying that, you know, he he wanted to keep playing through the pain until they were until the team was out of the playoff picture. So, you know, good on him. Yeah. Uh, at least he didn't hurt his shoulder in a fight. In a fight, where, doing something stupid. So there, there's that. But, uh, you know, I guess – this is the time of year when guys take care of lingering injury problems when you're right. out, <laughs> out of the playoff picture. Well, at least at least we know he's not going to be playing golf. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, let's go f- uh, s- switch gears to an, an, another Edmonton team, but this one actually in the playoffs. Their Edmonton Oil Kings are well into their Eastern Conference Finals of the Western Hockey League playoffs, Jim. Yeah, they're tied with the Calgary Hitman at one game apiece. They lost the first game at home, which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah. The second game at home, six nothing. He had nine power plays in the first forty minutes and couldn't score. But and they, uh, you know, obviously found their scoring touch and Cruz to a big win this week. They're in Calgary for the next two games. Martin Gurnat had five points on Friday night. Then uh, signed an entry level deal uh, with the Oilers. How about that? Uh, that's uh, yeah, I'd say one way to prove that you know it was a, a solid move. Sign a contract. Ah, five points. Five points. I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'll get five points and get paid, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. What the heck? Uh, hey, if you offered me that, I'd take it. I, I mean, you're good like that, though. Yeah, I mean, you would take a discount. Um, so I was at the Oil Kings game, and it was a, it was a great game, sort of. The refing was a little suspect, and hey, I'm an Edmonton guy, and I'm happy when the when Calgary anything loses, but man, it was like. Uh, I read a stat that they had, that the Hitman had over a hundred penalty minutes in a playoff game. Like it was just there was always, always on the in the penalty bench. It was, it just, was absolutely the, crazy. just the quick side note. Still with hockey. Still with us loving Calgary failing. Yes, they can't even tank properly. <laughs> yeah, that's right too. They get out of the playoff picture, and they, they you know they start they they get rid of Iggy. They Everyone. you know moves. And then it's like, okay, well, we're going to have, have a high draft pick. You know, maybe we'll even pick first overall. They start to dip down the standings. Now they're ahead of Edmonton. Absolutely. Can't even tank correctly. <laughs> tank. We're going to have a higher draft pick than them again. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. We're going to we're going to move on to the Gabbies now, folks. He's a good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst in the world of sport, and we usually make a little fun of it. But we're going to talk about a good right now, and it is the best in the world the of best. sport for the past week. Uh, it was a rough week all over the place, but this is this is why I love sports. So a good to Big Poppy David Ortiz for his awesome pregame speech on the weekend at the as the Red Sox honored the police officers who worked on the Boston bombing case. His speech ended with. This is our effing city, man. He's such a beauty. And with oh, his accent, great. too. Like, I can't do it, but what a, it was just wonderful. 
Yeah, it was it was a thing of beauty in the and everyone and it was on national TV. Oh, Everybody yeah. saw it. Oh, it was a beautiful thing. David Ortiz. And he'd been out of the lineup too, so people yeah. were excited that he was back and this is our this is our epic city, man. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about a good to Golden State Stephen Curry, who set a single season NBA record with 272 three pointers and became the first player in league history with 253s and 500 assists in a single season. Dude's only 25. Unreal. Does Golden State have any other records? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say probably not. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Golden State. But that's unbelievable, though, right? 272 three pointers? That's wow. pretty good. That's... And 500, 500 assists, man. That's unreal. Those are uh, Gretzky numbers. Oh, totally. <laughs> uh, good to Keith Yandel, who wore a Martin Richard jersey during the warm ups for Saturday's Coyotes Hawks game. The number eight jersey was in honor of the eight year old Boston bombing victim. And, and sorry, Martin Richard. That's what I, French Canadian, had it in my head. I was like, hockey. Anyways, uh, it was a class. <laughs> it, yeah, and so I screwed that up. Less classy move for me, classy move for Keith Yandel. So, no, I like that. That was good. See, you know, when, when you make a mistake, it's like, oh, Jeff made a mistake. They're expected on this side. <laughs> I don't even stop to explain it. You don't even just, stop. You just keep going. Yeah. Jim Kerr. <laughs> oh, Jim Kerr. Let's, uh, let's give a bad. Yes. To the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, man. In the playoffs for the first time in nine years. Unreal. Jeff. There have been two lockouts since their last appearance, but the Oilers now, I believe, have the longest drought. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, that's just a bad. And there's nothing worse. There is nothing worse, Jim, than sitting here watching the Edmonton Oilers lose and having the Maple Leafs. Like, it was okay because the Maple Leafs always lost too, but it's I, I like Caddy. Yeah. But he drove the Stanley Cup around the streets of Toronto. I saw day. that. What was guys, that about? Guys, take it easy. No You're kidding. in the playoffs. I Nothing's changed since the last time you were in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. It's still a, a tournament. Oh, totally. I you don't get to that. just can't believe know. that. Um, that's the only that's the only time it'll be up and down those streets though. I'll tell you <laughs> that. That's that's crazy. Guaranteeing it now. I like that. That's right. Uh, a bad to Milwaukee Brewers ace Giovanni Gallardo, who was arrested for drunk driving this week. Police say he blew nearly three times the legal limit. But that of you know, of course he won't face any jail time. But don't worry, folks, he will face hundreds of Hundreds, folks, hundreds of dollars worth of fines, according to reports. <laughs> Unreal. So there's that. So there's that. Yeah, he's going to be mildly inconvenienced yeah. about it. Poor guy. Uh, how about a bad to the fans of Argentine football club Huracan, nice. who stormed the team's dressing room and assaulted some players wearing masks and everything after a recent loss. They also stole belongings and damaged the cars outside the stadium. I think eight players' cars were were damaged in some way. This is a second division club. Unreal. Unreal. And they got crazy masked fans storming the complex because because they got knocked out of the cup that week on penalties. Could could you imagine like, like we have angry fans in Edmonton. Could you imagine storming the dressing room? Like, oh man. Oh man. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Uh well, again, soccer, you know. It'll, it's only it's only about to get better, though, here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. the punchline this week is Liverpool striker Luis Suarez. We've talked about him before, yes. Jeff. Yes. He's in the news for all kinds of reasons. He was, he's the guy who, in the World Cup against uh, one of the African teams, put his hands up and, and swatted the ball right off the goal line. Like, got took the straight red or whatever, but then they missed the penalty and – so his team ended up going through, and he was hailed as a national yeah. hero for just blatant cheating. Absolutely. And he's the guy who's – he dives a lot, mm. and he's always – you know, that's what he's in the news mostly for. But he's also a fantastic player. Oh, yeah. A great player. But he does all this stuff, and you're like, oh. So uh, in uh, 2010, yep. he spent it for seven games for biting. Right. Okay? That's sometimes – you know, look down on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I know Mike. You know, it was Mike Tyson. He right. didn't really. He didn't really do much for his career. No. Anyways, so you think, okay, 2010, seven games. He'll never do that again. You're wrong. <laughs> uh, 
happened uh, this weekend. He bit a guy. He chopped down on Chelsea's Branislav Ivanovic uh, on the weekend. He actually he later apologized for it. So it's not even so. like up in the air as to whether or not he did it. No, he comes into him and you see him just go <sighs> and just takes a chunk out of him. Um, so there's there's no punishment handed out as of this recording. Right. But you know something good's coming. Oh, you know it. Don't just go around biting guys. Oh yeah. You can't just if, you can't do that. And he's he's been in the news a lot for a lot of disciplinary type reasons in the past. So there's gonna be some there's gonna be some major waves, I think, on this one. That's yeah, absolutely. You can't um, just bite guys, man. No, you can't just bite guys. No. Give a seven game suspension for it too. Well you can't seven again. Right. It's gonna be at least seven or more. Like it's gonna be probably it's got a bit more. And you can't just give eight, because like, oh what, second bite's only a one game? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a good I, point. Season. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, you, like, what would they do in the NHL? You can't just bite guys. No, you can't just bite guys. If you actually get suspended for it and you come back, lay low for a couple of years, <laughs> yeah. just bite a guy again? Like, you can't have that in your league. Totally. I, I'd love I mean, the NHL ignored it the first time when it happened. <laughs> See what would, you know... What would transpire if a guy like, you know, legitimately bit a guy twice? Twice, yeah. How do you handle that? I don't yeah, know. So, but here we go. Here we go. Luis Suarez in the news again for something ridiculous. Ah, soccer. You get a chance. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Huh, how about that? Well, <laughs> Well, folks, cool. that's our 15 Minutes of Fame up for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 Minutes of Fame. In the meantime, I'm Luis Suarez's next meal. <laughs> and I'm just Jim Kerr. Right? <laughs> All right. Have a good week, folks. <laughs>